If in dark places is said that there are ghosts that lurks in dark corners. However, in the dark side of the internet, a man named Peter Gerard Scully also lurked into these dark corners. According to the Fairfax report, it was due to the poverty of the Philippines it became a billion dollar global child cyber sex industry and Peter is one of the leaders behind this worldwide pedophile ring. Peter built this empire in a remote town in Cagayan de Oro, Philippines, where he organized the production of photos and videos showing the physical and sexual abuse of children 12 year old and under. The crime that Peter committed in this place was one of the most horrific types of child abuse which was recorded around the world. People and experts who handled the case describe him as a ruthless and heartless person. Now, join me and let's go back to the life of Peter Gerard Scully and how he was called the world's worst recorded pedophile. Peter Gerard Scully was born in January 1963 in Melbourne, Australia. He was a normal citizen without any trace or any sign that he will become a dangerous human being. After getting married and having two children, Peter's family settled in Nar Warren, a village in Australia. One day, something suddenly changed in Peter. Peter left his family and decided to move to the city of Melbourne. While in the city, Peter developed a property scheme and defrauded two investors of more than $2.68 million in this property scheme. While in the city, he also had a Malaysian girlfriend by the name of Ling and he also procured her in private sex parties. According to Peter's acquaintances in the city, he has a secret website where he found customers who are paying for Ling's sexual services. Some of Peter's acquaintances said that only greed and money makes his world go round. The authorities found out about Peter's business, so he became the target of the Australian Securities and Investment Commission investigation in 2009. For several years, he hid from the authority and in 2011, Peter decided to leave Australia and fly to the Philippines. Later, when he arrived in the Philippines, Peter stayed in Cagayan de Oro, an island found in Mindanao, Philippines. The same year, Peter started his empire. Everything started under the internet which we most use in our daily life where we can access websites and apps such as Facebook, YouTube, Google, and others. Dark web is part of the internet where the so-called onion sites are located. It is called onion sites because it has many layers similar to an onion. And underneath it, is this is what is called hardcore. According to Wikipedia, the word hardcore comes from the two words hardcore and hurt, which means an extreme form of child pornography. Hardcore is supposed to be the fetish of people who find satisfaction when they see pain or torture to a poor victim. These types of people can be said more unsatisfied when they hear the cries and screams of the victim. These websites are not registered in the central registry so they cannot be accessed using a regular browser. You need to have a secure browser, anti-malware, VPN connection, just to make sure your browser is fully secured. Many syndicates are scattered on these sites. There are those who buy and exchange drug transactions, human trafficking, child abuse, and other illegal activities. Many international authorities are always guarding this type of websites because most of the illegal transactions are being held inside the dark web. Here, Peter sells his videos featuring children who are aged 12 years old and under. Peter sells 
his videos to his clients from Europe, America, and Brazil for $10,000 per video. Peter has formed an international pedophile ring with videos of sexually abused children and he called this production the No Limit Fund or better known as NLF. He live streamed the abused and tortured children among customers who are willing to pay. Peter had two runners named Carmi and Angel Alvarez and Dizel Margalio. Peter met Angel when she was only 14 years old. Peter was one of Angel's customers when she was still a prostitute. Peter took her in and later became an accomplice on running his business. On the other hand, Izel Margalio was also a prostitute. The two became in a relationship and later joined Peter and Angel's operation. They had a luxurious lifestyle wherein Izel lived in a big condo, Cebu, and also became a member of an exclusive fitness center there. All her wanderings and extravagances were documented on her social media. And she introduced herself as Shannon Carpio, a wife of a software millionaire. Because of the money that Peter gave her, she was able to buy designer things and travel to different places. There was no limit of spending on what she can buy and sometimes will get the bill on the bars that they went and pay for it. She also treats her friends on her local travels and even in some of her international ones. It can also be seen in some of her posts on social media that she has been active in participating in charitable events by donating money supposed to be to help the poor. Giselle and Angel are the ones looking for children who are gonna end up to be Peter's victim. They usually target the poor families and they promise the parents of the children that they will be given a luxurious life and that the children will be, will be also fed and educated. But the truth is that they will make them slaves in Peter's pedophile business. Together with Angel and Lizelle, Peter rented 15 houses in Cagayan de Oro to be their shooting location. 11 girls and boys are Peter's total victims. Among these children are 8-year-old Barbie, the 12-year-old Liza, and the cousins Queenie and Cindy, and a child named Daisy who is only 18 months old. There are many videos of what Peter has done, but the most famous of these videos is the one called Daisy Destruction. It is a series of videos where you can see a foreigner who sexually and physically abuses children. The children featured in these videos are 26-year-old Liza, cousins Cindy and Queenie, and Daisy who is only 18 months old. In the videos, Peter's abuse can be seen using a lighter, barbed wire, sex aids, hot wax, and sometimes he drowns the children in water. A pedophile was also interested in Peter's contents by the name Matthew David Graham, or better known as Lux. They own a site called Hurt to the Core, one of the most notorious sites in the dark web. On this site, people tend to exchange abuse contents and most of these contents are about children. Lux took one of Peter's notorious videos and in result, it gave Peter a lot of views and clients. You can also see in these videos what Angel and Lizelle's participation in Peter's shows. A part of the video shows where Peter whips the children and also steps on the girl Daisy and even strangled, molested, and hangs her upside down. In these videos, you can see two masked women who are Peter's helpers nurturing the children. These women are none other than Lizelle and Angel. This video spread in Europe, so there were a massive investigation to catch the person making these kinds of videos 
and also rescue the poor children involved. The investigation was very difficult because it is said that Peter is very good at hiding on the internet. He left no trace so they couldn't track him down. The police thought that the videos created were originated in Germany because of the man in the video has a Dutch accent. Also, the face of the man in the video were pixelated in some parts of the video too. So no one can really point out where it happened. But the authorities did not stop investigating. However, one of the investigators was able to identify that the man's accent in the video was Australian and not Dutch. Because of what they said, more evidence was found relating these videos led to a trail that these videos happened in the Philippines. The authorities were desperate to catch Peter with six arrest warrants. The police went to Avabel subdivision, the guy on the Aura city. On September 2014, Peter Scully was finally arrested. He was only wearing a t-shirt and briefs when the police found him in one of his rented houses. The police searched the 15 houses he was renting one by one and obtained evidences that would put pressure on him in the case. It includes a computer, cameras, USB hard drives, chains, and paraphernalia used for abuse and also some of the victims were found and rescued at the same time. According to reports, cousins Cindy and Queenie met Peter at the Centurio Mall in Cagayan de Oro, where he gave them food. Then, he invited them back to their house. When they got home, Angel gave them a bath while Peter was filming them. The next morning, they were ordered by Peter to dig on the ground to make a pit and when it was noon time, Peter stripped them and ordered them to do obscene things with each other. And if they did not want to do it, Peter would bury them in the pit that they had made. Cousins Queenie and Cindy soon was able to escape from Peter's house and eventually Peter caught them and brought them back to the house, beaten and slapped. Angel even pinned them on the face using a pillow so that they could not make any noise. Peter then put a dog collar and tied them with a chain like dogs for five days. After that, Angel decided to release Cindy and Pini because her conscience could no longer handle what was happening to the children. Once the children were found, they ran to the police and it confirmed the dark personality of Peter. From the authorities handling and investigating the crime, they said, This case may be the worst type of child abuse they have ever seen. The many years they have been handling child abuse cases. Yes, only people who have no heart, let alone the soul, are capable of doing these such terrible things. Some police officers were moved to tears because they felt so sorry for the children. Lizelle and Angel were also arrested by the police, but Lizelle was later released because there was not enough evidence of her involvement in the case. The police found a video where a young boy was featured, and in that video, with Lizelle's presence, it confirmed Lizelle's participation in Peter's crime. On January 2017, when Lizelle was recaptured by the police, she was seen walking in Malapascua Island in Cebu. After Peter was caught, there was good news that the authority received. 18-month-old girl Daisy had survived when her family rescued her. There is one school in Mindanao where the authorities came and found a child who was Lisa's former classmate. This child confirmed that Lisa lived. However, the good news was vastly replaced by a tragic one, as the police received a report that young Cindy did not survive. Peter's abuse and mistreatment of Cindy led to her death, and to hide the crime, Peter buried young Cindy under the house he was renting. The authorities went to this house, and there, they dug up the bones of the 11-year-old girl Cindy. According to the investigation, 
Peter strangled Cindy until she suffocated. Also, according to Angel, Peter even joked about killing her. Cindy's body was excavated by the forensic team, carefully joined Cindy's bones with full respect and love, on which Peter withheld from her. The case suddenly became complicated when the evidence room in which were all the evidence against Peter was burned, including a hard drive, memory card, and cameras. There were speculations that Peter may have paid someone to burn all the evidence against him. However, it was not proven. But it was not an obstacle to continue the trial in the original trial court of Cagayan de Oro. Peter's case was heard and found guilty of charges of human trafficking, syndicate child pornography, child abuse, video voyeurism, kidnapping, murder, and rape to children under the ages 12 and under. It came out in the news about Peter to the masses, and a lot of people have expressed their opinion that Peter, Michelle, and Angel should receive the death penalty. But because of the second optional protocol to the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights that was signed by the Philippines in 2007, the death penalty has been abolished in the Philippines. While in jail, Peter was interviewed by the program 60 Minutes Australia. It can be seen in this vid interview that there is not even a trace of remorse on Peter's face. He is still smiling and seems to be annoyed by the host's questions. With each difficult question, he is answered that he has his journal that he started when he arrived in the Philippines in April 2011. He puts an entry here every day and this journal can answer how he got to that point. Peter also allegedly became arrogant inside the jail where he orders the police and said it was just like a vacation when he was put behind bars in 2018. Peter and Angel were sentenced to life imprisonment and ordered to pay 5 million pesos for moral damages. However, in 2022, they were once again sentenced and Peter's sentence was increased to 129 years in prison, while his accomplice, Lizelle Margallo, received an additional 126 years in prison as well as Angel Alvarez. They are currently incarcerated in the Davao Prison and Penal Farm in Panabu, Davao del Norte. Peter, Lizelle, and Angel may be behind bars but this still does not highlight the fact that there are still many children who are sexually and physically abused. Currently, according to reports, the percentage of cases of abuse has increased even more in children, especially when the pandemic and quarantine started in the Philippines and, and it remained a hub spot to these kinds of crimes. Through this, Peter gave a wrong picture to the nation of Australia because of what he did. He has no heart according to the director of the NBI who handled his case. While shedding in tears, the director said that no person in their right mind would do what Peter did. The two Filipino accomplices of Peter are both senseless and mentally ill. The director gave a message to those child abusers who still continues to abuse children and quoted, he said, you can run, but you cannot hide.